this is network resistor you will find here 0 0.9 volt so if you focus here as you see we have here 1.8 volt okay we have 1.8 volt means this slot or this ram is ddr2 in this pin you will find 1.8 volt okay also in the plus terminal for this capacitor you will find 1.8 volt there is many kind of ram so for ddr1 we have the vdd is 2.5 volt and vtt is 1.25 volt for ddr2 we have 1.8 volt and 0 0.9 volt for vtt the circuit diagram for the ram so let's assume that we have here the ram okay ram so for the random access memory it needs two voltage the vdd okay and the vtt this voltage is is for the the whole ram and the vtt is for terminals terminals means this this is terminals okay and other voltage is for this ships okay so let's assume that we have for example a ddr2 okay the kind of this ram is ddr2 so the ddr2 should be powered by 1.8 volt and 0 0.9 volt so vdd should be equal to 1.8 volt and vtt 0 0.9 volts okay so let's see first the example of one ic that generate the vdd and the vtt for the ram so normally we have this ic so this is ram ic okay ram integrated circuit okay and for this ic this is the v in okay always about 19 volt it can be 20 volt or 18 volt etc let's take just 19 volt okay this is the v in in this pin and of course we have a lot of signals we will see all that in the next uh, courses okay the signals in detail okay so we have here the v in so we have here ground okay so in this side we have thermosfets okay we have here q1 and q2 okay so this is the drain for this mosfet okay goes to another 19 volt okay and here over here we have capacitor okay this is pf capacitor all these are pf capacitor and here we have source and gate okay so this is gate okay so this is upper gate okay and here we have source will be connected to this mosfet so this is the drain of this mosfet and this is the source so the source will be connected to the ground and the gate will be connected to this ic so this is lower gate okay so here in this side we will get the vdd okay this is the vdd okay of course here we have other capacitors chemical capacitors okay and coil okay so plus 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 so this is chemical capacitor and this is coil in this side of this ic we will we will get here the vdd for example for the for ddr ddr2 let's take ddr2 our example we will get 1.8 volt and in this side the same we have other mosfets so this is q3 and q4 okay so we have here source connected to the ground okay and this is the gate okay this is another upper another lower lower gate okay so they have we have here one and one 
upper gate one and lower gate two here we have the lower gate two and so we have here this mosfet okay this mosfet should be connected okay to this 19 volt here okay and here we have source as you see so this is source will be connected to this mosfet okay and gate here so we have the upper gate two okay so and we will get here the vtt that is equal to 0 0.9 volt because we have the ddr2 here of course we have capacitor okay connected to ground and here we have another coil we have here l1 here we have l2 so this is the main component of the ram circuit so this is ram okay ram circuit okay that we find in every desktop motherboard but sometimes we find that just one ic as you see here in our example here we have just this ic just it generate both vdd and vtt but you can find also in some motherboard that there is two ICs that can be generated the VDD and VTT. So we find exactly like this. So we have this is another example. We have so the RAM IC IC okay and the RAM IC that generate both VDD and VTT. VDT and VTT has a reference that is different from this IC. Okay, so we have the RAM IC. Okay, as you see here. Okay, so here we have a MOSFET. Okay, we have MOSFET here. This is, for example, Q4 and Q5. So the drain of this MOSFET is connected to 19 volts. Okay, here we have, of course, capacitors, beef capacitor, and the source. Of this will be connected to the drain of this MOSFET and here we have this gate okay this is upper gate and here of course we have the source will be connected to the ground and we have here the lower gate okay and here or here we will we will get the VDD we will get the VDD okay the VDD so 1.8 volt VDD. Of course, here we have capacitors as we see always. We have ground, here we have coil. Okay, so this VDD will be applied, okay, to another IC. As you see, here, this is the RAM IC. So this is the VTT RAM ice so this vdd means 1.8 volt will be applied to, to another ic that is powered with the same voltage 19 volt as the uh, volt source voltage and then this will gives to us the vtt here Okay, we give to us here the VTT. Of course, the same principle. We will we will have here two MOSFETs, okay, and capacitors here and coil here. Okay, the same principle with the upper gate and lower gate, etc. So the two methods that you can find in the desktop and also in the laptop motherboard for the RAM circuit. You can find one IC that generates the VTT and VDD, the both voltage. So the VDD is the main voltage for the RAM and the VTT is the terminal voltage. Okay? The voltage for terminal. And you can also find just one IC, as you see here, that generates the VDT. Or you can find two ICs where it generates the VDD as you see and then based on the VDD we will get the VDT as you see but using another IC okay I want to explain to you more about 
the RAM. Okay, so we have here RAM. So I told you that there is many kind of RAM. So for DDR1, we have the VDD is 2.5 volt and VTT is 1.25 volt. For DDR2, we have 1.8 volt and 0 0.9 volt for VTT. Always VTT equal VDT divided by 2. For DDR3, we have 1.5 volt, 0 0.75 volt. DDR4, 1.2 volt and 0 0.6 volt. For DDR5, 1.1 volt and 0 0.55 volt. Okay. So I have a question. How can we know if the motherboard uses a DDR1 or DDR2 or DDR3 RAM? So if you focus here, as you see here, okay, we have here 1.8 volt. Okay. This is 1.8 volt. So Okay, we have 1.8 volt means this slot or this RAM is DDR2. Okay. So this is a DDR2 RAM. Always the RAM you can differentiate between it using this. As you see, for the DDR2, we have this part here. Okay, it is divided here, but for three, for example, you will find here or here for other RAMs. But you can simply use the slots. Okay, simply you can use slots as you can see here. Okay, here and here. It is clear 1.8 volt means this is DDR2 RAM slot. Okay, so if you if you check here, if you check this MOSFET, okay, this MOSFET, or if you check this, as you see, this is the coil, the coil that is responsible. This coil is responsible for to power this RAM, okay? So you will find here in this pin, you will find 1.8 volt. In this pin, you will find 1.8 volt, okay? Also, in the plus terminal for this for this capacitor you will find 1.8 volt but where can we find i have another question where can we find the vtt 0 0.9 volts so because here we have this is the ddr2 so we have ddr2 here 1.8 volt vtd we will find it here in this coil and in this capacitors Okay, and the VTT, we will find it in this, as you see here, we have here a small PF capacitor, as you see. This PF capacitors, if you check this using the multimeter, you will find 0 0.9 volt, because 0 0.9 volt is for the terminals, okay? Also, if you connect, if you connect the RAM chip, and you measure this as you see this resistor this is network resistor you will find here 0 0.9 volt and into this capacitor the big capacitor as you see here PF capacitor you will find 1.8 volt okay so this is DDR2 memory slot here it is powered with the VDD that is equal to 1.8 volt and VTT that is equal to 0 0.9 volt. Okay. I want just to add some information as you see for so for the MOSFET. Okay, we can find the MOSFET with three terminals. Okay, so this is a MOSFET as you see. So we can find a MOSFET with three terminals terminals so this is a MOSFET here we have the gate here we have the drain and here we have the source okay always when this gate okay when the voltage okay applied to this gate here for example let's assume 1.5 volt is applied to this gate so the current will flow in this direction 
okay the current will flow in this direction from drone from drain to source if we have a p and p mosfet okay but if we have an npn mosfet the the current will flow in this direction from source to drain okay and also you can find a mosfet with eight terminals okay exactly like this okay find a mosfet with eight terminals so we have here okay this is drain all this i'll drain okay so this is drain here this is the gate and this is the source okay so the same principle we can do exactly like this as you see so this is gate and this is source and this is drain so as you see the drain is connected to four pins the source is connected to three pins and the gate as you see is connected to this pin so always the mosfet is operated when it receive a power in its gate okay the same principle as the transistor 